Today we're here to discuss the dangers of settling your Ohio accident claim too quickly or without a lawyer. It's very common for the insurance company to contact you very soon after the accident and offer a small amount of inconvenience money to settle your bodily injury claim. This may be done while you're still in pain, still seeing doctors, or before you've even had a chance to seek medical attention and find out what's wrong with you medically. In almost every case, in my opinion, this quick offer is well below what any competent lawyer could get you. Accepting a sum of money for your injury, no matter how small, may destroy your chances at further recovery, even if your injuries turn out to be more serious than you thought when you accepted the settlement. In addition, if you settle your personal injury claim without getting permission from your health insurance company, you may lose your health insurance, and they may not pay future medical bills. This is something most Ohioans who are injured don't know about. It's called breach of subrogation, and it's a legal concept that can cost you dearly if you settle your personal injury claim without a lawyer reviewing the paperwork and your case in general. Most people have never even heard or thought to themselves, hey, I can lose my health insurance if I don't have a lawyer review my settlement paperwork and my case. Let's discuss what to watch for if you find yourself talking to an insurance adjuster without a lawyer after an Ohio accident and some of the tactics that some Ohio insurance adjusters will use to convince you to abandon your case or to take a lowball offer. Watch out for insurance adjusters that try to befriend you and make promises to pay future medical bills. Of course they want you to think that your claim will be fairly evaluated and there's no need to contact an attorney. In fact, one insurance company's training manual teaches their adjusters to keep injured victims away from lawyers by being their friend. I believe they do this for one reason to save the insurance company money. The insurance companies know all too well that clients who have legal representation have larger settlements in general. Remember, these are trained professionals who know just what your claim is worth according to recent jury verdicts and they are trained how to negotiate a settlement that is in their favor. Don't be fooled by a nice voice on the other end of the phone. The one who knows that you are most likely inexperienced in negotiating claims. Adjusters are, by and large, good people. But many of them work for companies that require them to save money by paying the least amount that you will take for your claim. It only makes common sense. They are in the business to make money. And paying you a lot of money makes them less money. The less they pay out, the more profit they make. Make sure you even the playing field. Just because an insurance adjuster says your claim is worth X dollars doesn't make it true. Your claim is ultimately worth what you will accept and what a jury will give you. With a competent personal injury lawyer documenting your case and willing to go to court for you if necessary, the value of your case usually goes up. Looking at it another way, the value of your case can also be measured in what amount the insurance company will pay to reduce the risk of a large jury verdict. Insurance companies hate risk. A competent, aggressive personal injury lawyer increases that risk, which increases the settlement offer in most cases. Think of lawyers and litigation like nuclear weapons. Few people want to use them, but just having them around makes you safer against the other side. When the insurance company knows you have a lawyer who has repeatedly taken them to court and made them pay dearly in the past, they're more likely to pay more money to settle the claim. It only makes sense. Talking to defense lawyers over the years, some freely admit to us that they take the reputation of the lawyer into account when deciding what to offer. This is all part of the defense lawyer doing his job. His job is to calculate the risk to his or her client. Now, after successfully handling thousands of personal injury cases, it's my opinion that the more experienced, competent, and aggressive the lawyer is, the better the settlement in general, all things being equal. Some adjusters take the opposite tact from being your friend. They may tell you that you have no case, that you could not have been injured in such a low-speed accident, if your injuries are serious, they'll still say the same thing. Have you heard this before? Other adjusters may say that other people weren't hurt, so how could you be hurt? Or they'll say you were hurt because you're old or overweight. They'll say juries aren't awarding very much money these days. But they may be so bold as to simply tell you they'll only pay for a limited amount of medical treatment no matter what your doctors say. Hello again. Today we're here to discuss today's reality of accidents and lawyers. Let's be frank, most insurance companies are profit-driven machines. They evaluate each case as the potential threat to lost money. It's a zero-sum game. If you win, they lose. 
But unless you're a lawyer yourself, if you don't have a lawyer, you're probably not going to file suit and be successful. So the real threat of a large excess jury verdict is very small. Since the risk to the auto insurance company or any insurance company is small, they can afford to be more aggressive with you. They most likely will be. For example, they may have set aside or reserved $20,000 for your claim, but only offer you $1,000. What are you going to do about the lowball offer? After all, besides filing a complaint with the insurance commission, which will probably do very little as they don't usually get involved in case evaluation issues, the only real threat you have is that you will hire a lawyer. And, as evidence is destroyed by time or not gathered at all, that threat decreases every day, as discussed above. Insurance adjusters love to tell injured victims that they pay the same amount regardless of whether a lawyer is involved or not. In my experience, this simply isn't true. Hello. Let's discuss the types of financial compensation you may receive if you're injured in an Ohio accident by someone else's carelessness. If you are injured due to someone else's negligence, also known as fault, Ohio law says you are entitled to various types of damages. Medical expenses. The reasonable and necessary medical expenses that you incur as a result of the accident or are reasonably certain to incur in the future. This includes treatments such as hospital care, diagnostic testing, surgery, physical therapy, chiropractic care, and pain management. Many times the insurance company will try to make you accept medical expenses based on what your health insurance pays. However, our attorneys may help you recover the full value of your medical expenses, not the discounted amount that the insurance company would like for you to accept. For example, if your medical bills are $10,000, but Medicaid paid the doctors $1,000 as full payment, the insurance company may argue your medical bills are only $1,000, and so they may only offer you $3,000 to settle the case. Outrageous, but true. Lost wages. You are also entitled to recover any wages, earnings, you lost as a result of your injuries. Wages, commissions, bonuses, and all other earnings are recoverable. Even if you have used disability insurance through your employer, you can still recover the full value of your lost wages. Future loss of earnings. If your injuries have permanently limited your ability to earn in the future, in many instances you can recover the value of your earnings reduction. If the criteria are met, our attorneys will provide the evidence needed to support your claim and make sure you are compensated for your lost earning power over the remainder of your working years. Pain and suffering. You should be compensated for the physical pain, mental anguish, and loss of quality of life that you have suffered because of your injury. This includes future pain and suffering as well. Pain and suffering damages are in addition to, and many times exceed, your medical expenses and lost wages. Loss of full mind and body. Many times an accident can leave permanent injuries. If you have suffered any permanent loss of function or use of your body or mind, you should be reimbursed based on the percentage lost. This is known in the legal and medical community as permanent impairment ratings. This means you are permanently impaired as a result of the accident. Over the years, we have learned that most insurance companies only accept permanent impairment ratings from medical doctors, not chiropractors or physical therapists. As such, if you are permanently impaired, it is important to be documented by a licensed medical doctor. Disfigurement. If your injury has left you with scars or other unsightly marks, you should recover for that disfigurement and the embarrassment associated with it. If you never recover from the disfigurement, such as when you have a permanent scar, you may also have a permanent impairment, discussed earlier. Damage to the marital relationship. A marital relationship can suffer when one spouse has been severely injured. If this occurs, you are entitled to recover for the loss of care, comfort, joy, affection, assistance, and loss or impairment of sexual relations. In addition, in some serious injury cases, the spouse may also have a claim against the party at fault for the loss of consortium they have suffered as a result of the party at fault's carelessness. Death. Wrongful death damages are usually available to the beneficiaries often the wife, husband, parent, or child, of the deceased person. Damages are not only limited to economic loss and may also include lost earnings, pre-death pain and suffering, and loss of consortium, also known as loss of companionship. Mm -hmm.